Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I want to quickly show you how to configure an Nginx reverse proxy in Docker. Now, in order to do this example, the first thing we need is a Docker container to run. So I'm going to do a little sudo docker run command, and I'm going to name this container Nginx base because it's going to be the baseline for the Nginx reverse proxy we're about to create. I'm going to run it on port 80 as we usually do, and I'm going to use the latest Nginx image from Docker Hub. Now there you go, that starts off Nginx, and if I come over to my browser and go to localhost, well, I should get a little welcome message saying, hey, Nginx is up and running. But this isn't exactly what I want. It's great that Nginx is working as a file server, but I want it to work as a reverse proxy. I've got this application running on port 8080 on this great big long IP address. And the application uses the context root sample, as you can see. I don't want users to have to type that in. I want users to be able to go to Nginx, say to Nginx, hey, you're running on localhost. Give me the sample application. And when they do that, I want that slash sample to map to the application running on the Apache Tomcat server. Or any node, M, Angular, whatever type of application running on the back end. And that essentially is configuring Nginx as a reverse proxy, but as you can see, it's currently not doing that. So I have to make that configuration. Now, here's what I'm gonna do to start off. There's a configuration file inside that Nginx container that, well, if tweaked properly, will turn Nginx into a reverse proxy. I want that file. So I'm going to do a, little, do a little sudo docker copy command. And I'm going to say, go into that Nginx base container and look in Etsy, Nginx, conf d, and grab that default.conf file and make a copy of it on my desktop. Now I'm just gonna take a look at that, make sure everything was spelled correctly because sometimes I make an error there, but that all looks good. I'm gonna click enter and boom, all of a sudden in the lower right-hand corner, you can see that default.conf file has been copied. I'm gonna open that up with a little sudo nano default.conf command. And here you can see that entire default.conf file. Now, in order to configure this as a reverse proxy, what you have to do is you have to add a new location setting. So I'm gonna add a new location setting here. And I'm gonna say anytime somebody comes in and asks for slash sample, what I wanna do is I wanna route them to that Tomcat application that is running on port 8080. And that means configuring a proxy pass setting and specifying the IP address, port number, and application name, context root, of that Tomcat server. So I'm gonna type that in here, 192.168.246. Point one three one colon eight zero eight zero slash sample. Now you also have to make sure you got a semicolon at the end of that. I'm going to do a control O to write that out. I'm then going to do uh, maximize on the screen just to take a look at everything in there. I think that all looks good. 192.168.246.131. I think it all matches. So I'm going to do a control X get out of here. And now my configuration is done, but all of that configuration is in that local default conf file. That's no good to me. I need to actually take that file and put that inside of the Docker container. So the next step is to do the reverse copy, I guess you could say. I'm gonna do this command here, sudo docker, let's copy that file, but not from the container to the file system, but instead from the file system, namely desktop, in that file called default.conf, and we're gonna put it back in that nginx container, slash etsy, slash nginx, slash conf, 
And I'm going to double check that just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. sudo docker cp desktop default conf to nginx base etsy nginx conf dot d. I'm going to click enter. Looks like that was pushed in. We can always validate that with a little sudo docker exec nginx base nginx dash t command, which will validate that file. Looks like the syntax is good. We can even do a sudo docker exec command on nginx base and ask to reload that file so that it all runs without having to stopping and starting the container. Looks like that signal was processed. So the theory is if that file has been edited properly, we should no longer get a 404 here if we do a refresh. Let's see, refresh and boom. All of a sudden we now have nginx handling that slash sample request. When it comes in, Nginx is forwarding the request to the Tomcat application server. The Tomcat application server processes it, sends it back to the Nginx container, and the Nginx container sends the response back to my browser. That is Nginx working as a reverse proxy inside a Docker container. Now, what's next? Well, we'd actually like to create an image based on that container, right? We don't want just that container floating around. We want to actually create an image so we can start that image anytime in the future. So how do you do that? Well, now you issue a, well, I'm going to do a sudo docker images command first. So you can see the images that are currently running. Looks like I got nginx, tomcat, and sample. This is images not running, but images loaded. I'm going to do this sudo docker commit command. I'm going to take that nginx base container and turn it into a new image called the nginx proxy. And if I do that docker images command again, you'll notice that nginx proxy is a brand new image. I've now created a brand new image called nginx proxy. And I could even go in sudo docker run nginx proxy and we actually have the proxy server running as our own image. Now, uh, some people don't like that approach. So I'm going to show you one other way to actually create uh, an image and it's using a docker file. So I'm going to just create a new docker file here. So touch docker file and then I'm going to do sudo nano docker file. And this puts me into the basis for the Docker file. The Docker file is actually over here on my local file system. You can see it's just created there right next to the default.conf file. And in this file, I'm going to say, hey, I want to start off with the latest Nginx configuration. And what I want to do is then copy that default.conf file that is in the same folder as the Docker file and copy it into Etsy nginx confd default.conf and that is now a docker file that i can use to build a new image based on that configuration this is great just in case you know you start editing this default comp file and making changes to it and you want to recreate the image rather than starting off an nginx container and copying a file from it and updating it you can just run this particular command here. So I'm going to save that. Control O, Control X to get out. And now with that Docker file created, all I have to do is say sudo docker build nginx reverse proxy dash t and dot, which means looks for the Docker file in the current directory. Helps if you spell things correctly. But what this is gonna do is this is gonna create a brand new image, but not creating an image from a snapshot of a container, but actually creating a new image based on that default comp file and the Docker file. So sudo docker build nginx reverse proxy, three words this time, dash t dot, I'll click enter. And I think I got that t tag flag transposed. Let's change this around a bit dash t tag this image as nginx reverse, let's keep spelling it wrong, 
proxy dot and boom, all of a sudden we have another image created. And if I do Docker images here, you can see that we not only have that Nginx proxy image created that we created from a snapshot of the container, but we also have the Nginx reverse proxy image created, which we created from that Docker file. And there you go. That is how you configure an Nginx reverse proxy in a Docker container and create a couple of images that you can use over and over again. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Docker, Kubernetes, Git, DevOps, microservices, Java, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter, CameronMCNZ, and please subscribe on the YouTube.